Today, I'll be showing you the most efficient way to complete all 10 of the secret Sphinx riddles so that you can grab yourself some amazing loot and the full marks achievement while minimizing the amount of backtracking you have to do to get them. This includes a foolproof method for obtaining the special 11th chest after completing all 10 riddles too that is easy to miss or mess up. A lot of existing guides out there are either incomplete, partially wrong or misguided, and definitely inefficient as people rush to be first rather than correct. To make this as painless as possible for yourself, you're going to want to listen closely to the list of prerequisites required for each riddle, and ideally you should be capable of either killing a dragon or being tanky enough to survive running away from one before you dive deep into this endeavor. Additionally, it's extremely easy to mess these steps up by doing something as simple as trying to back out of a dialogue option if you accidentally try to answer a riddle prematurely, so you should have an insave queued up shortly before solving riddles and between steps if necessary, or actual hard saves of your game backed up as a last resort. Seriously, there's a very good chance of inadvertently screwing this up and either locking yourself out of all the rewards until your next playthrough, or doing a serious walk of shame backtracking from your last inrest if you haven't prepared accordingly. Follow my steps though and you'll have a next to foolproof setup for painlessly knocking these out. These 10 riddles are done in batches of 5 across 2 locations on the western part of the map, with the checkpoint rest town serving as our starting point for both. Before we talk about getting to the Sphinx itself, let's cover the items you should definitely have with you for riddles 1 to 5. Normally, you'd be smart to bring a port crystal with you for this, as not only will we need to teleport back to the Sphinx's location once we get there to solve clues partway through, but you'll also have a chance to duplicate it too. However, we'll be able to immediately complete a riddle there that rewards a port crystal that most people do wrong and teleport away for, so no need to bring one along with you. With the item duplication reward in mind, however, if you for some strange reason don't want an extra port crystal at the end of these trials, then additionally bring any other item of your choosing that you would like to have duplicated. I'd also plan on bringing at least two fairy stones. Bring a couple extra if you hate having to walk if your ox carts get broken halfway through a trip though and to also have your trickster vocation ranked up to rank 4 to unlock the detection augment and have it running on whatever your active vocation is. You'll want this because for one of the riddles you're going to need to return to the spot you found your very first seeker token at, so unless you remember exactly where this one was, it may be tough to find without the augment, as it provides you with a visual and audio cue to better locate seekers tokens, including finding the item needed for this corresponding riddle. This is optional, but useful. If you still need to unlock the trickster vocation, you can find it here in Batal, and you simply need to speak to Luz and you'll unlock the vocation. Ranking it up to 4 shouldn't take very long at all, and it's pretty much essential for anyone trying to collect all the Seeker's token rewards anyways. Aside from this, you'll simply want to have your preferred gear for venturing out into the world as we make our way to the first Sphinx Shrine, though I would personally recommend you run the Mystic Spear Hand vocation with the Dragon's Foin skill, or on Warfare with that same skill running or a Sorcerer with Levin, as both of these make navigation easier overall. Now that we have everything we need, let's head out, but don't skip ahead as there's a crucial pit stop we need to make along the way for one of the riddles. Starting from the checkpoint rest town after making sure to rest at the inn so that you have a backup safe to load into if you mess up one of your riddles, you're going to head northwest over the bridge until you see a path to the west fork off the main road descending down. You'll see some hobgoblins and rattlers along the path which you can fight or run past, but before you go too far, you want to climb up these broken chunks of bridge and follow the elevated path to the right until you reach the Riftstone of Fellowship. Enter the Riftstone and pick up any pond with the title Sphinx Mother, Father, or Parent, and continue on your way along the original path by going down the bridge or yeeting yourself off the edge of the cliff if you're a real arisen. This pond will be required for one of our riddles. After entering the forest area along the path, you'll stop by a campsite which is probably worth resting at before proceeding further. There's also a golden beetle here as well that you may as well scoop up too. Moving forward, you'll enter a large clearing where you'll find a cyclops and a dragon potentially fighting each other or with the cyclops already dead, but you're going to have to decide whether this dragon is worth fighting or if you'd rather just book it past the scaly beast towards our end objective. Regardless of your decision, you'll want to walk along the left side of the clearing up towards the structure with a gate following the winding path. Once you reach it though, you'll find the door is locked and you'll need to instead clamber up the wall here to get yourself further into the fort. If you have Levin on a Sork or the Mystic Spearhand Dash Dragon's Foin, then it'll be much easier to get up this, but I've made sure to test this without and it's still possible to mantle the rocks to get in. Kill a few hobgoblins in this area if you'd like, but keep your eye out for this hole in the ground and hop down to quickly bust open that locked door you previously came across to make it easier to access this area again for a separate quest 
or if you decide to visit the area without a fairy stone teleport in the future while hunting for seekers token. Keep moving forwards climbing up this ladder which will likely have a cyclops in the area that you may have to kill and once you're up the ladder you should immediately see a cave that you can enter. Head in and deal with a few bandits there and consider resting once again to fill any loss gauge before moving on. The cave has a few standard enemies and doesn't have many side routes so you can just continue onwards but here's a map as well for your reference. There is however one alternate path that leads slightly downwards into a cluster of mineable rocks that contains quite a bit of white cobble which is a fairly rare end game upgrade material so I would definitely hit those up if you're planning on upgrading some powerful weapons and armor. Once you've made it to the exit you'll see some golem corpses and there will be one actual golem you can fight as well as a neat little stone carving with a riddle referencing the sphinx. This isn't actually important but give it a read if it's of interest to you. Head through the only path forward past the golem and to your right you'll be able to walk forward along a path to a final campsite to rest at if desired or look further to your right to see that there's a staircase that you can follow further up to the first sphinx shrine. Before walking up to the sphinx I highly recommend saving and possibly getting a new hard copy backup of your game files too if you don't want to have to go all the way back to an in rest save if you mess things up and your natural save gets overwritten before you can reload. Now it's time to dive into the riddles but again be prepared to do so with extreme care and confidence when it comes to answering them. You need to be ready to answer correctly each time. Start by walking up to the dies and initiate conversation with the sphinx. They're a fun character and it's worth listening to all the riddles. Listen to all five of the riddles to activate them but be ready to solve the riddle of rumination within seven game days or you will fail it so avoid resting past this point as much as possible until it's done. We'll do the other four first and have means of solving all four of them right here right now before completing rumination so let's knock them out quickly. For the riddle of eyes the sphinx will ask you to bring them the item of greatest value in the area just to the right of the sphinx's shrine if you are walking away from it. Walk in then simply turn around and look up and you'll see a chest which you can loot to find a ceiling file. This is the item you need to present to the sphinx in order to solve the first riddle and you'll be rewarded in kind with one wake stone for your troubles and you'll be able to keep the file as well. The rest of the dungeon has little to be desired with the two other chests containing rotten apples and a troll in the lowest floor of the area with some mineable rocks so you're not missing out on too much. The ceiling file is an interesting item that you can use to put an NPC into and travel with before releasing them though it does break after one use. You also can't make a functional forgery of this item, it'll just make a useless glass file. Second is the Riddle of Madness, which many people have solved correctly but inefficiently. The clue suggests that you should bring an NPC with which you have maxed affinity with, leading people to transport an NPC back to the temple with them, but it's actually much simpler than that. Simply pick up your main pawn, throw them on the dies, and answer the Riddle of Madness, confirming that this is your choice when prompted. Be very careful to not try and back out of this dialogue option or the Sphinx will be pissed and will fail the riddle and peace out. You'll have to reload if this happens or accept your fate. If all goes well though you'll be granted a lovely port crystal for your efforts which we'll be using right away for our next riddle, the riddle of conviction. For this riddle a common misconception is that a particular item had to be given when in fact you can give the Sphinx literally anything that you'd like and they'll just double that item for you. The obvious choice is a port crystal for anyone who doesn't yet have the maximum of 10 port crystals in their possession, but the choice is ultimately yours. Realistically though there's maybe only a couple of unique weapons, armor pieces, special items and rings that would be worth even considering for duplication. So for 99% of people you're probably better off duping a port crystal here. Another item that could be worth duping though only possible in a new game plus or later run would be duping an eternal wake stone which we'll be acquiring at the end of this video. Once you've completed this riddle, head over to the chest to grab your duped item and then throw your newly acquired port crystal down just outside the sphinx's shrine as we'll need to teleport back here for riddle 5. Riddle 4 is the riddle of wisdom and this is the one where our new sphinx parent type pawn comes into play. Pick up your new pawn friend, throw them down on the dies and confirm your selection with the sphinx to be rewarded with a nifty little 1200 RC to fund your pawn remodeling, a pair of spectacles or a high level pawn hiring. This is probably a good point to make a quick save here and we're moving on to our fifth and final riddle for this location which is the riddle of rumination and it's certainly the most troublesome for the majority of people and that is to retrace your steps back to the very first spot you grabbed a seeker token in your playthrough to collect a finder's token to bring back to the sphinx. You only have seven in-game days to do this so time is of the essence so avoid resting at inns and camping. 
there's a pretty good chance you found your first seeker token between the border watch outpost and Melv. So this is a great place to start unless you have an exact recollection of finding one somewhere completely different. This is where having the detection augment from the trickster vocation active really comes in handy. Not only does it help you find seekers tokens, but it also works for the finders token we need for this riddle. If you're like me and already cleared a shitload of seeker tokens prior to visiting the Sphinx, then upon returning to the general area of where you found your first token, then you'll only be hearing the dinging for the newly spawned in finders token and it'll be very easy to acquire. If not, then you'll probably pick up a few bonus seeker tokens along the way which never hurt anyone, and hopefully after not too long you'll have the finders token in your inventory. A final tip for this is once you have a general sense of what area your first token would be in, assuming you haven't explored the entirety of the area, then you can at least narrow the location of the token down to only places that have already been revealed on your map, specifically your mini map, because sometimes what shows as discovered on your map hasn't actually been found on your mini map. So don't walk through any blurred out areas on your map as you certainly haven't walked through them before. As for getting there, since it's probably between Melv and the starting area, I would just ferry stone to Vernworth, then Oxcart to Melv, and move towards my suspected location of my first token. If your ox cart gets raided and destroyed on the way and you're a ways off from Elf, then you could consider fairy stoning back to Vernworth to try again, instead of walking the rest of the way, though you might have to use up a day of rest time to get a new card in, so do this at your own risk, but it'll save more real time time. I can't offer much more in way of suggestions here since this will be unique to your playthrough, but I'm sure you'll be able to track it down assuming you've got the detection augment running. Once you've got the token, fairy stone yourself back to the port crystal at the Sphinx Shrine, Prepare to hand it back to the Sphinx, but before you do so, you have an important choice to make, so don't do it yet. When you hand in this token to the Sphinx, you'll be done all five riddles for location one, and the Sphinx will set off for location two, but they do so very quickly after handing this in. Now you can either hop onto her back and catch a ride over to the second shrine and enjoy the view without having to take the walk, or you'll have to walk there yourself, which isn't terrible, but it is slightly less efficient. The trade-off is that you're very unlikely to be able to grab the loot from the final chest, which is three fairy stones, which is definitely useful for the next set of riddles and in general. It can be possible to loot the chest and hop on, but it's a giant gamble as you've got to be extremely fast, so you definitely want to back things up beforehand if you're dead set on getting to Shrine 2 this way. Personally, I didn't bother and I wanted to explore the entire map anyways, so I let her fly off into the distance and then walk there myself. Alternatively, you could opt to complete one of the other riddles last, and accept that you probably won't pick that loot up unless you revisit the location, so you could maybe do that with the one that gives you a single wake stone as that's probably the least compelling reward of the first five. If you choose the same fate as me, or you simply missed your chance to hop on, then let's talk about getting to location two and what you'll need for riddle six to ten. First, you can decide whether to grab your port crystal from the first shrine to place somewhere else you'll frequent more often, or you could pick it up before even attempting to hop onto the Sphinx's back and bring it with you as well if you're sure that you don't want to come back here and you aren't sad about potentially missing the loot without having to walk back manually. For Riddle 6 to 10, you'll be visiting the Checkpoint Rest Town partway through as well as back Batal. So if you have extra port crystals to throw down, which you should have at least one of and hopefully two after Riddles 1 to 5, and you don't already have any there, you can prioritize a back Batal port crystal and then Checkpoint Rest Town second. You will however also need to place one at the second shrine itself to save a ton of time. So if you don't have three on hand, then skip dropping one at the checkpoint rest town as it's super easy to ox cart there from Vernworth. You're also going to want to switch to the archer vocation at some point before completing your final riddle with the Sphinx and you'll need to bring a bow with you. So either do this now and be ready to kill some enemies with a bow along the way or be very sure to not forget to switch before finishing riddle 10. You can also have the Warfare vocation with the bow as well to do this. Finally, make sure to get another inrest in and possibly another hard save backed up before we head out again in case you mess up a riddle partway through. You're also going to want to bring a minimum of four fairy stones with you as there's going to be multiple back and forth teleports we need to do in order to complete a couple of the riddles at this shrine. To get to the second shrine, we're again starting from the checkpoint rest town, only this time we're following the path through the river canyon going southwest that flows west of the town. Enemies will be pretty similar to the path of the first town, with a minotaur and chimera just before the shrine, so keep this in mind. Follow the path until you reach the tunnel portion of the canyon, deal with the rattlers as you see fit, and start ascending the right side of the canyon. Cross the log bridge and you'll shortly come across a campsite that I'd probably rest at. 
There's a few Seekers tokens and Golden Beetles in this area as well if you're interested in grabbing them. Keep heading up this way and pop through the little cavern entrance which leads into a small foggy clearing where you'll find some enemies including the Minotaur and Chimera. Kill them if you'd like or beeline it to the left and you'll see a narrow elevated path to run up that leads directly to the second shrine. If you want another Seekers token before heading over there though, you can run to the right and you'll find a chest to loot and a Seekers token here. Alright, we're at the second shrine now, and simply getting here completes the Riddle of Reunion, which rewards you with a whopping 100k gold from the first chest after speaking with her. From here on out, however, the Sphinx will present you with the remaining riddles in a random order, which can be troublesome regarding the final puzzle, but it's not a run ruiner by any means, it's just a little bit annoying. Before taking on any more riddles, I suggest walking just outside the shrine area, tossing your port crystal down, and saving once again. I'll cover the remaining riddles in no particular order since it's random, but I suggest watching all of them prior to attempting them yourself in game, as there are important notes to consider for some, especially the riddle of recollection, if it ends up being your 10th and final riddle. The riddle of contest is one that requires no teleporting and is nothing too crazy, but is easy to accidentally screw up if you're not careful. The Sphinx will have you face an armed combatant, but will make you equip a ring of derision, which for all intents and purposes makes your attacks do zero damage. This ring will be automatically equipped by accepting the riddle challenge, no need to equip it manually. Seeing as you do no damage, you're going to need to either count on your pawns intervening by running near them and having them attack him, or simply beating this guy's ass until he's staggered so that you can pick him up, then yeet him off the cliffside to the right of the shrine. Coincidentally, my pawns got involved and not only damaged him, but detonated an explosive that also launched him off the cliff, so I guess I got the best of both worlds here. Now you want to be extremely careful before wailing on this guy to stagger him because if you do accidentally hit the Sphinx during the fight, she will become angry and fly off locking you out of the rest of the loot. Therefore I suggest running closer to the cliffside right at the start of the fight to make sure this doesn't happen at all. Additionally magic based classes will be harder to knock down the warrior without inadvertently hitting the Sphinx so position with even greater care using these. After your foe has fallen you'll be rewarded with the Ring of Ambition which boosts your XP gains by 50% which is not bad if you're interested in leveling yourself or your pawn faster at the expense of any offensive, defensive, or utility type combat buffs you'd get from another type of ring. Also, after finishing this riddle, make sure to take the Ring of Derision off as you will continue to do no damage if you keep it equipped. Next is the Riddle of Differentiation, which is a clever nod to Devil May Cry, which you'll see in a moment. You need to pay very close attention to this riddle when the Sphinx gives you it as she will tell you to bring a specific NPC to her, but there are two NPCs in the game world that look nearly indistinguishable to what she'll show you, save for the hairstyle. One of them will have curly hair that almost covers their right eye, while the other has straight hair swept to the opposite side. Looking for the straight versus wavy hair is the best differentiator, so if anything just pay attention to that and think about screenshotting the image she shows you right when it pops up as you'll only have a few seconds to take it in. As for finding these guys, the first is Dante, who can be found at the Checkpoint Rest Town, and they are our straight-haired friend. Their near doppelganger with a DMC reference name is Virgil, who is on the other side of the gates, right near the gate in fact most of the time, along with their wavy red hair. Once you're sure of the one you need, just pick them up and then toss a fairy stone into the air and it'll take them with you over to the second shrine. Throw them onto the dies and present them to the Sphinx and you'll be rewarded in kind with the whimsical daydream trickster weapon. It's a solid weapon that has a unique ability to grant you gold for every successful attack on an enemy, and now it's probably not the best thing to be whacking enemies as a trickster given how little damage it does, but if you really want to hoard gold, it can give 10, 100, or 1000 gold per smack, though the larger sums are appropriately far less common. It's a funny weapon overall, and this is strong for the class stat wise at least, and it looks pretty sweet. A quick note, if this is going to be your 10th riddle, then you want to be on the archer or warfare vocation now with a bow equipped to prep for the final chest acquisition, as you won't be going back to the city anymore. This would be the best point to get a final inrest and backup save created as well to minimize backtracking if the final step goes awry. Otherwise you can do this during the riddle of futility if you've not done it either, which we'll cover next. Second last is the Riddle of Futility, which is a task that requires you to unite a fragile amphora with Moritz, a Batali resident who spends his time near a mural of the Sphinx in Bak Batal. Now this amphora is incredibly weak and will break with even a single hit, so the task of carrying it to Bak Batal seems nearly impossible, which it probably is. So how else can we bring these two together? You guessed it, we can bring Moritz to the amphora instead using the same tech we did with Dante and Virgil. If you have a port crystal in Bak Batal already, then ferry stone over and make your way to the mural byway, which is north of the mercantile ward and west of the residential ward, right near where your home would be if you already have it there, 
where you simply turn left up the stairs and follow the path instead of right where your home would be. You'll find Maurice up here in front of the Sphinx mural where you can then throw him over your shoulder and fairy stone him back to shrine too, just like Dante and Virgil. Place him down carefully next to the amphora, making sure that you don't break it, and talk to him and then the Sphinx to receive an eternal bond ring, which you can use to accelerate and often instantly max out affinity with an NPC, such as a vendor to acquire max discounts with them. You can also just wear it to increase your affinity gains with everyone you interact with, which can be favorable since affinities reset after going into a new game plus cycle. Our final riddle is the Riddle of Recollection, which is a fairly straightforward riddle that has the Sphinx ask how many riddles you've successfully completed up to the point of receiving this one. Assuming you correctly answered all five in the first shrine, plus the one that you get simply for arriving at shrine two, your minimum answer will be six if it's your first one you get after arriving. Add a plus one for each additional riddle you've solved on top of the six for your answer and bring that number of stone statues that she summons over to the dies to present your answer. They don't actually need to be exactly on the dies, just relatively close to it in front of the sphinx for it to count. I had a few of mine fall off and the answer of six still worked. Now, if this is actually your 10th and final riddle, you're going to need to be ready to grab your reward very quickly as you're going to be killing the sphinx right after this and your window to do this can be quite small. If it's not your 10th riddle, you should still make sure you're watching this part now so that you're ready for it when it is your 10th riddle as you're still going to have to act quite quickly in order to be successful with this part. Have your bow equipped and be ready to attack the Sphinx with at least three regular shots to initiate combat and ensure that her HP bar shows up to confirm the combat has started. Prior to the HP bar showing up, however, the Sphinx will initiate one last set of dialogue before fighting you. If this was indeed your last puzzle, quickly make your way over to the newly unlocked chest to loot an unmaking arrow. Equip the arrow only after you see the HP bar show up and combat has started to make sure the arrow connects with her, ideally aiming for her head or torso for consistent result. If your aim is true, she'll die and deliver some parting words while dropping some coin pouches and the key of sagacity that was previously around her neck. Take the key to the grand chest she was guarding and open it up to receive the eternal wake stone, which can be used to revive everyone in town if they're killed by your dragon's plague afflicted pawns if you weren't careful in dealing with it. This is a great item to fall back on and in fact you can have the eternal wake stone duplicated by Ibrahim even though it's a unique magical item which normally can't be duped. This could be a bug or it's intentional given how serious dragon plague can be on your playthrough so time will tell if this gets changed or not. The one downside is that it'll cost you 30k gold to make a copy so it isn't going to be cheap so it's still significantly less than purchasing standard wake stones or acquiring the pieces to begin with to revive a whole town, so it's not awful all things considered. And there you have it, you should have all 10 riddles done by this point, a mess of loot along with your eternal wake stone reward, and a dead sphinx with a giant XP drop for your troubles. If you found this video helpful then drop a like, and if you're looking for more no BS comprehensive guides then consider subscribing for more content on your favorite games. I'll see you in the next one, peace.